Good afternoon, students, parents, and colleagues. Welcome to our second live stream prize giving ceremony. I hope you will enjoy the afternoon with us. I'm the chairman of this department. My name is Courtney Skutter. Let me tell you a little bit about industrial engineering and why I'm so proud about these students. The history of industrial engineering in Africa is fairly short. We started in the 1920s with the industrialization of ISCOR and ESCOM. In the 1940s with the Second World War, there was a lot of industrialization happening with Sassel and the IDC being established. In 1943, these engineers working in this industry started to organize themselves within the field of production engineering. And in 1964, the first industrial engineering graduates were delivered by the University of Pretoria under the leadership of Professor Chris Arendorf. That became the first independent department in 1967. And in the 1970s, the discipline also moved to Stellenbosch University, Stellenbosch University and WITS. In 1981, the Institute for Industrial Engineering was established as a Section 21 company. And as recent as 1984, we delivered the first woman engineer. 1985, Stellenbosch also became an independent department. And in 1986, Professor Paul Creer was the first graduated industrial engineer who became the president of SAI. There are demands of our time. This is a comic by Zapiro in 2015. With Taxi wars, economy, whatever, chasing, and we were quite proud about weight for Nikark in those days. And I thought that was quite relevant to say this is our IE hero. But since then, we also got COVID 19. And you can see the impact of COVID 19 on what happened. If you look at our degrees, the top line you see there are the number of bachelor degrees of the department. It's grown from about 40 in 2011 to nearly 120 now. The second line is the master's degrees, the research master's, also growing from about 15 uh, to about 40 averaging now. And then the third line is our PhDs. And then at the bottom at the right, you will see there are two little lines there also. That is the postgraduate diploma in data science and also our structured master's in data science now starting to appear and starting to make an impact. Another picture I'm quite proud of is what happened with publication outputs. This is one of the measures on whether a discipline is successful in its research. And in 2011, we were just over 10, and now we are over 70. So we had increased six times our publication outputs in the past 10 years. Weighted research outputs is sort of a weighting per lecture on how successful we are. And you can see in terms of weighted research output, we are above seven, and the average for the university is about three and a half, so twice the average. The people who are making this possible are a team of personnel that I'm extremely proud of. Let me start with my support and technical team. Firstly, Tani Karina or Tani K, as the students know her. There's also Tani Amelia. There's Anel, Nel, Anel de Beer. There is uh, Elise, there is Melinda Rist, there is Dean, there is Sissy, there is Tola, there is uh, uh, Melissa, there is Martina, there is Shante, there is Clive, and there is Diana. They are all the support and admin who are making this engine operate seamlessly and smoothly. On the academic side, there's myself, and in no specific order, is Professor James Becker, Konrad von Leipzig, Professor Jan van Vieren, Professor André van der Merwe, Dr. Tiens Dirkse van Skalkwijk, Professor Andries Engelbrecht, Professor Natasha Sachs, Professor Louis Lowe, Professor Steven Matope, Dr. 
Jou berg van Eden, Dr. Lausanne Bam, Professor Sarki Grobbelaar, Dr. Vajan Juiste, Dr. Imke de Kok, Wouter Bam, who was promoted to associate professor last week, the uh, Pilanis and Kume, who will get his PhD tomorrow, Stefan Nell, Dr. Stefan Nell, who got his PhD in March, Professor Jakobin Groblaar, Tulim Kalipi, Elden Burger, Dr. Sidney Masongo, Kasongo, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Dufork, and then our last joiner from the beginning of next month is Professor Tinas Boesen, who will be a joint appointment in IoT between ourselves and electrical and electronic engineering. Then I have a screen full of wisdom and experience here. We have Professor Oliver Dam, who is involved with the Fraunhofer Institute and also helping us to look at advanced manufacturing. We have Professor Kali Pastoris, who some of you might know from your days at the University of Pretoria. We have uh, Professor Niels Furry, who is Emeritus Professor, and he established the Prasa Chair at the department. And we also have Professor Wessel Pinar, who established the School of Logistics and is now an Emeritus Professor at this department. Now on to the nice things. I'm first going to award the undergraduate prizes. In a live event, we would have called the student to the front, we would have applauded him, we would have delayed the name in anticipation, but today with the live stream, we need to keep it fairly simple and a little bit boring. Firstly, the highest average in the first year in 2021 is Boas Hansen with an average of 82.6%. Congratulations, Boas. Secondly, is the highest average in the second year. And I'm glad to say it's Dirk Truist, just over nearly 81%. Dirk is a special case for me. Dirk was homeschooled on the Cambridge system, and he did not fit the normal acceptance process rules. So we had to do a special appeal to the rector to actually allow him to study engineering. And look at this now. I'm so proud of Dirk. Congratulations, Dirk. Average, I would, uh, the highest average in the third year is Matthew Garrett, 82.2%. And the highest average in the final year is Jean-Louis Swart, with 81.7%. And what you'll see now is quite interesting. You're going to see two names alternating the whole time. And you'll see in a moment why that is. The departmental prize for the final year with the highest average over four years is Karen Fenter with an average of 81.8%. The lecturer's prize for making engineering visible on campus is again Jean-Louis Swart. Then we have again the decision-making and analysis prize. That's the best student over four years in mathematical and operational research, that's again Karen Fenter with 86.24 for the subjects. And then when you move on to information systems and programming over the last four years, it's again Jean-Louis Swart with 85.3%. There's also the Cumusic Prize for student nomination. That's where students vote for the best student, who what I think will be the most successful engineer in future. And that goes to Linke Brown, price of 6,000 rand. Now again, I have a nice introduction, somebody special to introduce to you. It's Reitz Bruxma. What we do always is we try to give the audience and the parents a bit of an overview on what students typically do in the final year. Uh, so Reitz will just show us his project. And what makes Reitz also special for me personally is his mum, Mari Hillian did my children's school readiness assessments. So I'm glad that we can return the favor to deliver an engineer for Mari Hillian and her husband. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
my name is Reid Spruksma and thank you so much for the amazing opportunity to be telling you more about my indoor hydroponic vegetable grower aimed at health conscious urban South Africans. On our agenda for today, I will start off by taking you over the background of my project. Then I will give you some information about my project aim as well as the perceived problem that I identified. Then I will go over the approach that I followed to achieve this aim as well as what I did to verify the problem at hand. Next, I will go over the solution and how I designed it, as well as how I developed a working version thereof. And then at the end, I will tell you how the, I analyzed the feasibility of my solution, as well as give some key recommendations, as one must do with each big project. Urbanization is increasing in South Africa, and this is happening at a very fast rate. This leads to large urban populations and all of these people require mass amounts of food. Therefore, mass vegetable production that often uses GMOs and pesticides have become somewhat of a norm within the country and many other developing countries. As with any controversial uh, things such as GMOs and pesticides, health conscious um, people sometimes believe that these, solution, these things can have potential health problems. As with increasing health, uh, health consciousness within the country, many health conscious consumers have begun demanding healthier alternatives to these potentially harmful mass-produced foods. This brings me to the perceived problem and project aim. Some health conscious urban South Africans desire to grow their own vegetables at home, but many cannot due to lack of arable land since they live in urban environments. Yes, the South African market does have many potential solutions available for these individuals, but many of these solutions are, are too expensive for some individuals to afford. And this brings me to my project aim. My project aimed to develop and determine the feasibility of a low-cost, portable, LED-enabled, IoT-enabled and mobile application-supported indoor hydroponic vegetable grower. To achieve this aim, I had to follow the following approach. My approach started with me first gaining a deeper understanding of the problem at hand. Then I had to ensure that this solution actually ex or this problem actually exists within South Africa. And I did this through surveys and interviews, as I will discuss later on. Next up in my approach, I was able to start designing my solution, after which I built a working version thereof. And then I had to analyze this, the feasibility of this solution. Now, as mentioned previously, I had to ensure that the perceived problem exists within South Africa. Surveys were sent out to Somerset West and Stellenbosch individuals, and these surveys helped me to determine that there are indeed health-conscious urban South Africans who do desire to grow their own vegetables at home. This survey also helped me to, to understand that there is actually a potential market for my solution. I then interviewed a strawberry farmer near Somerset West, and this interview helped me to figure out how exactly vegetables are currently being produced within South Africa and how current South African vegetable value change look. After successfully ensuring that the solution or that the problem exists within South Africa, I could begin designing my solution. And I did this in two phases. One, starting with a physical grower, and the next, the electronic system. For the design of the physical grower, I started with specifying dimensional requirements, since this grower should fit in most urban living environments within South Africa. Therefore, the dimensional requirements are very uh, important in this regard. And I did this using the previously mentioned survey as well as applicable literature. Then, I had to specify the material requirements, which refers to what my solution was made out of. And the material requirements were that the materials used should be lightweight, relatively low cost, easy to work with, as well as non-toxic and non-soluble. Taking all of this into account, I was able to design the solution that you can see on the slide. And now for the design of the electronic system. For this, design requirements were once again required, and these refer to features that should be present within my electronic system for it to function as I intend. Taking this into account, I was able to conceptually illustrate my electronic system, and you can also see that in the slide. And now for the exciting part, the actual development of a condensed version of my initial design. I did this to ensure that the system actually functions as I intend in the real world. 
For this, I started with designing the system and I then built the frame and covered it with its enclosure. Next, I installed the hydroponic system and LED lights within this grower. And now you might be wondering, how did I ensure that this could actually grow plants? Well, for this, I actually planted lettuce, lettuce and spinach seedlings within the grower and allowed them to grow for a period of time. All the plants grew to be very healthy and I then harvested them. And you can see the whole process illustrated in the slide as well. For the actual development of my electronic system, I had to develop the onboard system for my hydroponic grower. You can see the system and all of its components illustrated on the slide. This system enables my hydroponic grower to automate its LED grow lights, monitor and control the ambient conditions within the grower, as well as transmit data to and from the mobile application that comes with the whole grower and system. For the mobile application part, I used a very nice program called MIT App Inventor. And this program allowed me to develop the application that you can see to the right of the uh, slide. The block code that I used to write this uh, application can be seen in the middle of the slide. And you might notice that this does not look like traditional coding. It's more like a puzzle format, and hence why I said it's a very nice, easy to work with application to use. And now, my application and my um, system, as well as the grower, has been designed, and I built working versions thereof to test whether it works. But now I should analyze its feasibility. For this, I looked at the financial, market, and technical feasibility aspects. For the financial feasibility aspects, I did a lot of cost calculations that all aimed to determine what is the difference between owning my proposed solution and comparing that to the cost of owning existing similar solutions typically available on the South African market. All of these cal cost calculations helped me to determine the time to break even for both my solution as well as the average existing solution on the market in South Africa. The time to break even for my solution was calculated to be 2.7 years which is far less than the 7.6 years that you would expect to break even with the existing solution on the South African market. Based on this, I deduct that my solution is indeed financially feasible. To test the market feasibility, six health-conscious urban South Africans were invited to look at what I've built and what I've designed, and I also told them about the cost calculations and showed them the time to break even. Each of the six individuals were then given the question, would they one day should this solution be taken to market, be interested in owning such a solution? And all six showed great interest and said yes, they would indeed like to purchase the solution should it be uh, launched into the market. Based on this, there's definitely a potential market for my solution as well. And now for the last part of my uh, feasibility analysis is the technical feasibility. For this, the same six health conscious urban South Africans were asked to score my solution's ability to reach each of the design requirements that I previously mentioned. They were asked to score this on a scale of one to five, one being the design requirement was not met and five being the design requirements was completely met. All of these scores for all of the design requirements as well as the uh, six individuals were averaged to gain a total average score of 4.87 out of five. And this showed to me that my solution is indeed technically feasible when taking into account its ability to reach each of its design requirements. And now, as with any big project, one has to reflect back on what you've done and give some key recommendations should the project be taken further in the future. For this, I mainly focused on data collection as well as the design and development of my solution. For the, the data, uh, data collection, I basically recommend that a larger, more diverse sample size be used as this will one day better represent the population of the target market. And for the design and development, I recommend that some tweaks be made to my initial design to even better reach the design requirements as I previously mentioned in the technical feasibility. In conclusion, during my project, a low-cost, portable, indoor hydroponic vegetable grower with IoT, LED and mobile application support was developed. And this grower serves as a potential solution to the perceived problem identified at the start of the project. The solution also proved to be feasible and the aim, of my, uh, the aim of my project was achieved by the end. Thank you so much for your time and listening to me. I very much enjoyed talking to you all and I will now hand over to Prof Skirt again. Thank you.
Thank you. So we're going on now to look at the prices for the final year project. Start again. It's on. I'm going to stop it again, just start again. Okay. So we're going on to the final year project prices now. The first price is the Prasa chair price and floating trophy. And that's for the best industrial engineering project in rail technology. And the study leader here was Peter Conradi. I can't show you the trophy. It's a floating trophy that you normally hand over, but it's a sort of a segment of a rail coach wheel. And it goes to Michael Burton. The next prize is the best industrial project in health system and engineering and innovation. The study leaders here were Prof. Sara Grobelaar and Iodia Vermeulen, and it goes to Rensha Furi. Then we have the optimization prize. That is for the best industrial project in systems optimization. The study leaders were Prof. James Becker and Julien Beam, and it goes to Izan Urendal. Then we have a decision support prize. That's for the best project in decision support. The study le leader here was Dr. Stefan Nell, and it goes to Karen Fenter. The quantitative support prize, which is for the project in the most sophisticated modeling approach. The study leaders here were Professor Jan van Vieren and Alexander Fleming, and it goes to Fuzail Taywood. Then we have the Sunor Bursary. That's for the best project by a Sunor student who plans to enroll for a master's degree during the following year. The study leaders here were Professor Jan van Vieren and Yuri Zitzman, and it goes to Stefan Duplessis. Then we have the Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing Prize, that is the Central University of Technology in the Free State. It goes for the best project with a topic on additive manufacturing. The study leader here was Professor Natasha Sachs, and it goes to David Ville. Then we have a new prize, which is the Black Slope Strategy and Innovation Prize. It's for the best project in the field of strategy and or innovation. The study leader here was Dr. Luzanne Baum, and it goes to Genevieve Field. And then we have a departmental prize, which is the industrial, industrial project runner-up. The study leader here was Professor Jan van Vieren, and it goes to Ivan Nanny. And then we have the Prachma prize, which is for the best industrial project overall. And the study leader is Professor Jan van Vieren, and it goes to Louis Quinby. Now we move on to our postgraduate students. Firstly, it's a big honor to award the Pragma Prize and Trophy for the best postgraduate project in physical asset management. The study leader here was Dr. Vajan Juiste, and it goes to one of our lecturers, Pilani Sankume. And he will graduate on Wednesday with his PhD. Congratulations, Pilani. We also have the best master's project in health systems, engineering and innovation. The study leaders here were Professor Sarah Grobelaar and Professor Adele Bota, And it goes to Ruan Spies. And he will graduate in March 2021. Oh, sorry, already graduated in March 2021. Then we again have the new prize, which is the Black Slope Strategy and Innovation Prize. And that goes for the best master's or PhD project in the field of strategy and or innovation. In this case, the study leader was Prof. Sarah Grobelaar, and it goes to Stian Fenter, and he will graduate also 
on Wednesday. Then we also have the Black Slope Ventures Prize, which is the best master's or PhD project relating to startups, venture building, and entrepreneurship. The study leaders here were Prof. Sarah Grobler and myself, and it goes to Chipa Ngongeni for a PhD study, and she will graduate, or she already graduated in March 2021. Then we have the Lecturer's Prize, and that's for the most versatile postgraduate student. The study leader here was Professor Jan van Vieren, and it goes to Stefan Nell, who graduated in March 2021. We also have a Departmental Prize, that's for the best overall postgraduate student. The study leaders here were Prof. Sarah Grobler and Adele Boota, and it goes to Ioda Vermeulen for a PhD, and she also graduated in March 2021. And then we have the so-called Duck Student Prize, which is also the Institute Prize. And that is for the best overall student over the four years. And that goes to Karen Fenter on the average of 81.8%. And she goes on to the role of honor. She also gets a medal from SAI. She also gets one year registration with SAI and also a cash prize. Congratulations, Karen. Now I'm handing over to our Dean. Professor Wickers van Niekerk. Who will... Oops. Hi, good afternoon. I, I was going to go a little bit off script to convince you that this is a live event, but I think what just happened and what happened um, at the start of the prize should have convinced yourself that, that this, is a, this, is a, this is really a live event. So this is really a live event, and it's absolutely an honor and a privilege for me to be here this afternoon. Um, I think it's a shame that we can't have in-person graduations, but uh, I know that our students are all going to get vaccinated and our staff are all going to get vaccinated. And hopefully by March or definitely by December next year, we can go into the Donny Craven and have a real graduation and we can have real prize givings because you guys did great and you really deserve it. And you're always welcome to come back and come and join us for those events. So it's an honor for me this afternoon to announce um, who will be the or who, who will receive their degrees cum laude um, at our virtual graduation on Wednesday. So uh, I'm going to start with um, Karen Fenter. So congratulations, Karen. Very well done. And also with the other prizes that you have received. And I trust she's going to do a master's. Are she going to do a master's? I think so, yeah. Karen is going to do a master's. If she's not going to do a master's, Karen, you've got to come back. We need you here. We need smart kids. Um, then also um, Jean-Louis Swart. So congratulations, Jean-Louis and also with all the other prizes. We also have Linke Brown, so Weigelijk Linke. Um, Kutsie Kuchlenberg, Weigelijk um, Kutsie. Megan Boota, congratulations. Louis Schoenby and Carla Niaus. So those are the students in industrial engineering who will graduate cum laude um, on Wednesday in our virtual graduation. Congratulations, and as I said, we look forward that all of you come and join us next year for Master Studies. Remember, Stellenbosch is a great place to be if you can extend that, you know, going and working there in Joburg or wherever you're going to end up for another two years. You're more than welcome to come and join us. Thank you very much, Professor Skitter. Thank you, Professor Van Niekerk. Nearly at the end here. Lastly, and I hope you can do some applause here for us, we present to you the class of 2021. That's the class photo that was taken earlier this year. Because of COVID, the lectures were not on the photo, so they were added at the bottom. So class of 2021, congratulations. Despite COVID and everything else that went with it, it was an absolute pleasure to have you here the past four years. We also have the special way of honoring some of our support personnel by giving them the name of Tony. Tony is a measure of respect in this department. The dean is laughing again. And firstly, Tony Amelia for doing 
and making all the unaggraded work move so, so smoothly. And then also, Tani Karina. As you can see, there's a photo of her in action. Tani Karina will be honored on Wednesday morning with a Chancellor Award. It's a once in a lifetime award that you can get. So Tani Karina, congratulations as well to you. And thank you for being the mummy to all of these students. And then lastly, another thank you. I want to thank all of our sponsors. Without you, this event would not have been possible. Thank you to our wonderful students. Without you, this would have been a non-event. We are really, really proud of you to prosper and achieve what you've done in these difficult circumstances. And lastly, thank you to all the parents you brought as wonderful material to work with. Congratulations on your beautiful son or daughter who will graduate on Wednesday ready for the challenges in life. Thank you.